Oh, hey everybody. Thanks for joining back in the garage today. As you can see, we got the engine all tore down. In the previous video, I was talking about deck height and how I had to rearrange the shims and stuff. Well, I've got everything over here all pretty much clean and washed up and I've been playing with the deck height. And I discovered that uh, I actually had some shims. I believe they were 90 thousandths. And if you remember, I was uh, talking that I probably would be happy with somewhere between 80 to 85 thousandths. Well, since I've got the 90 thousand shims and the compression ratio isn't that much different, I'm just gonna run those. I've already taken the liberty of, uh, of checking cylinder three and one, or one and three, <laughs> um, just to kind of double check to make sure I was gonna be in the ballpark. And what I'm gonna show you guys today is how I like to uh, check the deck height. And I'm gonna check it on four and two, or two and four. <laughs> so hang in there with me. Well, before I can check the deck height on those, I have to actually put the pistons in the cylinder. So I gotta do that over here. So come on, let's go. So we're gonna double check this, make sure that I gave you guys the right information. And yep, that says 88. Yeah, so these are roughly 88. I think the package says 90, but they're, they're a stamp deal. And you know, they're never completely a accurate. And if you ever deal with these, um, it's always good, like especially when they're brand new, um, they'll have stamping marks on here. So get yourself a file and you know, make sure they're smooth. That way you can get a good accurate uh, reading. But we're going to start with cylinder two, which should be this one. Yeah, there's two stamped on the top of it. You probably can't see that. There, two stamped on the top. And I'm going to give you guys, you know, a little more advice here. I've seen some people load their cylinders in. Get a better view here. This way. And I'm not. I'm not going to recommend doing that because if you see on here on this edge. This is actually a 90 degree. And it's harder for, for your uh, rings to get past that. If you look on this side, and it's 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 kind of hard to see on these cylinders, but there's actually a little bit of a bevel on here. Get a little closer under the camera, and I hope you can see that. There's a bevel. If you have seen any how-to manuals, like the Bentleys and, oh, the Haynes. Yeah, the Haynes books. You always see these guys on there have the pistons actually hanging on the engine, clamping, and they're sticking the, the cylinder on the piston this way. So I'm pretty sure, you know, that's kind of what the uh, factory recommends. <laughs> you know, don't quote me on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I like to use this universal ring compressor here. And you know, it's nice because it works for all size pistons, or maybe not all size, but all the pistons I've worked with. And they usually like to stick a little bit of, Ooh, look at that, it's a good green stuff. A little bit of oil on the piston rings. And if you guys known before, I always stamp my uh, pistons so I know which way up is. These are JE pistons. I'm not seeing an arrow on them. But I chose up this way so I know which way this is going to be in the bore. And then I can clock my rings. And we're going to stick it in here and tighten her up. Got to kind of be careful because it always wants to grab your rags or whatever you got sitting on the counter here. Okay up and then I always put a scratch in the cylinder here so I know which way up the cylinder is and I also know that this is number two and we are going to I'm going to put too much oil because I'll be uh, firing this up and as I'm doing this I'll explain that I actually did my calculations on 40 thousandths deck height, which would give me like a nine to one um, compression ratio. Well, with the 50 thousandths deck height, that gives me uh, like an 8.9 to one. So, you know, there may be a little bit of horsepower gain there, but you know, I, <laughs> I can't guarantee or calculate it. <laughs> and, but if anybody else knows, you know, Put a comment down below if I'm going to lose a whole lot of horsepower gain by going with that. All right, so up. So I'll make sure my two's facing that way. Two's facing that way. And I'm going to stick this in there. And I always use a rag here. Kind of line everything up. And just start pushing down. Easy as one, two, three. And you see... I didn't even have to use a hammer. I've seen people have to hammer these things in. 
You go in nice and easy if you do it right. All right, now I got to back it out a little bit. So which way? Oh, I got to go this way because I got the clip in there. All right, now remember to put this on. Let's, let's turn the engine around. I got this engine turned around here. We are going to rotate this number two here up. Looks like a top dead center. And stick the uh, spacer on. Make sure it wants the seat. All right, that should be good. Now the trick is to get this on here. <laughs> Make sure everything's in the up position. It looks good. And then slide the wrist pin in. It's kind of like got to do this blindfold. Slide the piston in and then easily bring this down. I mean, there's a tight interference fit down here. There we go. What I got here, it's a tool I bought a long time ago. I know a lot of people use the square ones with the four holes. And I don't know, back in the day I bought this block. I don't remember who it was from. Custom one, V-dubs maybe. And it comes with these sleeves. And the uh, dial indicator is sold separately. Come over here, find a flat surface, and zero it out, which looks like it's on zero. Close enough. And we're going to throw it on here. Now you need to find yourself some nuts and washers because that does, that didn't come with the kit. But since I put it on a short stud, <laughs> I won't need that. And like I said, this is always save a lot of the old hardware from uh, you know engines I tear down. All right, grab a wrench. Yeah, just snug these. You don't have to go super tight with them. Let's make sure nothing's going to move and that this barrel is all the way seated. And we're just going to slowly roll the engine over. Make sure nothing binds. Now, if you're assembling this engine for the first time, you know, you're going to want to make a couple strokes up and down just to make sure you're not hitting on anything, especially if you got like a, a stroke or crank or something. We're going to roll it up to the needle stops. Oh, this one stopped a little short. I may have to move uh, shims back and forth. Because that's actually saying 45 thousandths. And I'm pretty sure that uh, number one was at 50 thousandths. That's why we write everything down. <laughs> so number two, zero, four, five. And we're going to roll it around again. That way we make a full well, rods over here. Got to guide it. Yep. Forty five thousandths. And this uh, dial indicator always confuses me because it starts out backwards. But this is going to come up and zero will be right there. All right, we're going to check number four now and see how far they head off. And then we'll probably play the shuffle game with the shims and see if we can get, you know, the deck heights a little bit more closer. Gots to roll the engine over. Here's another thing I do. I check all four corners. Hey, okay. I'm not saying you have to check all four corners, but I do recommend checking one side to the other side because this case was machined, you know, by a, one of my older machinists. Every time... He did a case for me. It was always 10 thousandths difference from one side to the next. So I usually have to run two shims or 10, you know, an extra 10 thousandths on, on three and four side. And why I'm stressing this is because if you did your measurements on cylinder number one and say, ooh, 40 thousandths, that's good. And I don't recommend going below 40 thousandths on deck height because you may actually come up in higher RPMs and kiss the, kiss the head. But if you threw the engine together and you're 10 thousandths off from this side, which would be 10 thousandths less, you now have, you know, 30 thousandths deck height on three and four. And of course, if 
you know, we all know that three usually runs a little hotter than the rest of the cylinder. So I recommend at least checking side to side. We're going to put the shims on here. I may have to go and file these a little because they do, they do fit tight. And then, oops, I bent my 12 thousandths. Put a little kink in it. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Roll this up. And grab number four. Again, piston is stamped. Cylinder is marked. So we know which is up. And slide it down. And this is always tricky to do with a little bit of silicone. <laughs> Wind up with it all over your hands. Hopefully this slides in a little better. Yeah, that one was slid in really nicely. This should be a little easier for you to see. I have a big stud in the way. I will need to use this. It studs a little longer. You know, I considered, uh, you know, buying two of these so I could do both cylinders at the same time. Just never got around to buying a second one. Plus then you have to zero out both uh, dial indicators and you know, hope both your dial indicators are calibrated the same. There we go, that's tight now. And that's tight. All righty, let's rotate this around so you can see it. And here we are. And we're going to rotate the engine slowly. Ah, this one's even I got something going on. I got a lot of little checking to do because <laughs> this would be 36 thousandths. I wonder if that shim was a little thinner than the other one I had. I got some uh, <laughs> switching the Rui around to check. Either that or maybe I didn't get this one tight enough. All right, well, I got a little bit of experimenting to do, a little swap of Rui to do, and uh, I'll get back with you guys and let you know what I came up with. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I've got a bag full of shims. You know, I've been collecting throughout the years and I actually went through and measured all my thick ones and well, one of them was actually 10 thousandths difference than the other. So there was my problem there with this cylinder. So I wound up going back through the bag, found a combination that should be equal or, equal or pretty close to what we have. And now I'm going to throw uh, the dial indicator back on and see if we made any progress. I did have to go and file the shim a little bit so it fits in there a little better. I'm running 10 millimeter head studs. It's basically because I'm running a boosted engine and they highly recommend a bigger uh, head studs so you don't pull them out of the case. At least that's what I'm told. I haven't had that happen yet. <laughs> I hope I don't. All right, let's tilt this a little bit so you guys can see. And see if we made any progress. What in tarnations is going on? Huh. All right, people. I can't math well, but you probably already figured that out. <laughs> Put the other shim underneath there, and I calculated, you know, the 90 thousandths like the original shim is. And I forgot, you know, there's an extra 10 or 12 thousandths underneath the, the barrel. So let's see where we're at now. I'm gonna call that 48 thousandths. I'm happy with that. I gotta remeasure uh, cylinder number three here because I looked at my notes there and uh, that one's at 52 thousandths. You know, that variable, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I'm not uh, going for 100% blueprint on this. I'm gonna jump back to the uh, old notes with the other shims and cylinders when I had the engine together and see what the difference in the numbers were there and see if they were the same. You know, because you could have, uh, you know, a difference in the, the machine work and the decking you could have difference in the machine work in the uh, cylinder. You can even have a difference in the difference in the rods, machine length in the rods and the crank. You know, there's a lot of variables there. As long as, you know, I'm pretty close to 50 thousandths, you know, and the head's going to sit on there flat, I'm going to run it. But yeah, I got some other measuring to do. And I'll remind you, it's a good thing that, you know, I checked off four corners because if I would have thrown that all together and had, you know, 30 to 35 thousandths in the cylinder here, I probably would have had a problem in the, in the future trying to run the engine. So yeah, that's pretty much why I check all four corners. And the other thing is, you know, like I said, I'm digging shims out of a bag of, you know, misfit pieces and parts, you know, here's where I'm going to say, don't be like me, <laughs> you know, buy some good shims, you know, and that, that way, you know, they should all pretty much be all the same. Yeah, I actually, did the quick measurements and thought I was going to be good. And then, you know, I ran up to 
um, gyms to get some parts and stuff and decided that I didn't need any shims. But like I, I have run, I don't know who makes them, but someone does make a really good machine shim, especially, you know, when you start getting up into the, you know, thicker thousands range, you know, and, you know when you get up there to, you know, 50, 80 and 100, you know, more like the 100 thousands range, you know, you get a really nice shim and, you know, they're all pretty much accurate. I'm dealing with these stamp shims and, you know, the accurate accuracy just isn't quite there when you're stamping things. And like I said, um, I noticed a couple of these shims apparently weren't used because they still had, you know, the stamping um, machine edge on them and I had to file them down. But yeah, I've, enough talking, let's get busy. <laughs> Basically, you know, the next step, like I said, I'm gonna, you know, measure all four corners again and because, you know, I got a, a big difference in the other side too. And I'd like to get it, you know, closer. And then the next step after that is um, actually mounting the head on here and getting a geometry with the, you know, push rod length and stuff. And I'm crossing my fingers, hoping I don't have to buy another set of push rods. I've got three sets of push rods here. Hopefully I can get one set to work. I got there. Oh, a little fart can. Come on, let's hear it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna get back to work here and I'm gonna let you guys go and make this kind of a shorter video. I just kind of wanted to show you what, what the process was of uh, you know checking your deck height. You know, hopefully you'll learn something and, and maybe if you could teach me something, you know, please leave a comment. Uh, also be sure to, I don't ask much, but you know, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, keep shifting those gears, keep cruising, and always enjoy the ride. We'll see ya. Four hours just